everybody. Um, so, uh, yeah, I have some, uh, some bad news. Um, one of my, uh, subscribers, um, I, you know, I made a joke on one of my videos where I was saying, like, I've been doing so many foreground kits, um, it's turning into the foreground channel, and he's like, hey, did you know that, uh, foreground's going out of business? <laughs> so, yeah, like, bummer, right? Um, I really did feel like they were kind of, like, the gold standard of, um, of MDF kits, like, theirs, theirs were just kind of the nicest, um, like, the most detailed, and, uh, but, um, so yeah, I mean, you know, I've, I've been building a lot of their stuff on the channel lately. Um, they're going out of business. Um, they uh, are officially going out of business on June 30th of this year. And then after that, they say that they're going to be fulfilling orders still through a company called Time Again LTD. And I don't know, um, you know, that could mean that Time Again has the rights to the, they've like snatched up the rights or it's just going to be produced under a dis different company or, you know, like I think that time again, they actually make like replica swords and stuff. Like they sell um, stuff at like Renaissance fairs or something like that. Like I was looking around uh, um, Reddit, like trying to find information about this stuff and just trying to get information about this. I heard through the rumor mill, like, um, I know that Foreground had a failed Kickstarter. They, uh, they Legend of Fable Realms or something like that. And, um, they shipped out all of the MDF terrain that they, that they had made for the game. And they had some really nice looking buildings and stuff. You know, that's what they do, um, is make like really nice MDF kits. And, uh, and then, but the, like, three years, four years later, they still haven't shipped out the, um, the actual game, you know, like, the miniatures and then the rule book and stuff like that for the game, because it was supposed to come with, like, plastic miniatures. So, you know, we don't know, like, I heard from other people that there was a fire in one of their lasers, and, uh, and then they, you know, they themselves said rising costs and... So we, you know, we, we don't know, we may never know what's actually happened to Foreground, but um, yeah, they're, uh, the company is going out of business. So they are having a big sale right now on their website. You can, um, like, uh, I know that if you buy stuff from them, um, if you buy like 75 British pounds worth of stuff, then you, um, we'll get free shipping to the United States and that's probably like, I don't know, like somewhere around like $90 of stuff, you know, like $85, $90, somewhere around there. Um, so, you know, I know they're going out of business, but if you, if you want to snatch up some of that stuff before they do, now's the time. Um, so, but on the other front, um... So I, I have been working on something, um, uh, I like to watch these, um, like model railroading channels and, um, like, uh, I'll, I'll give you a couple examples. I'll, I think I'll put some links somewhere, you know, um, for, uh, for a couple of these channels. Uh, one of my favorites is, uh, Jason Jensen, um, Jason Jensen Trains. He makes um, some really, really gorgeous uh, models. Like he, um, he designed this, um, this uh, uh, like a giant kit. And um, it was, it's basically like a fisherman's wharf kind of thing from like, I don't know, like Portland, Oregon in like, the 1950s or something, you know, like, I think that that's kind of what he models his town after as like some like sleepy little fishing town in like Maine or Oregon or something, you know, like, um, but he does some amazing kits and, um, but everything that he does is in HO scale. So I'm going to talk about that. Um, the, this is O scale, right? 
So O scale is very, very close to um, like heroic 32 millimeter scale uh, or, you know, 28 millimeter, 32 millimeter scale. Like this is a dead man's hand building and then dead man's hand, the official miniatures are 28 millimeter. So um, uh, I have one, this is like a kit bashed. Um, Dead Man's Hand miniature, but you can see that that's very, very close, right? So what O stands for is original scale. Um, uh, it, it, like, cause it's like the original model railroad scale, the OG model railroad scale. And I think it was Lionel trains like way back when they, when they first started making model trains, they were very popular and that was the original scale, which is very close to you know, uh, tabletop gaming scale miniatures, right? So just to give you an idea, like 32, I have my notes over here, <laughs> 32 millimeter is uh, 1 to 57, right? Uh, and then 28 millimeter is 1 to 64 scale. And then O scale is 1 to 48. So they call that quarter scale, quarter inch scale, because, um, one inch in O scale is equal to four feet. And then in um, like heroic scale, one inch is equal to five feet. So it's very, very close. Like if you, if you play D&D, you might have done the thing on the map where you're like, count out, you're like, okay, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you know, to count out movement. Um, that's because on this, on, you know, like D&D miniature scale, an inch is five feet. So, um, but I got one of these little craftsman kits to play around with. They're crazy expensive. <laughs> um, even like the HO scale, which means half of O scale, they're like crazy expensive, but they're made out of um, like real wood, you know, they're, and then they're very intricate designs. Like I'll show you some close ups of this in the, in the video. But, um, like the, there's, it's flimsy. They're, they're made out of like very thin wood veneers and like basswood that's, you know, scribed and, um, and stuff like that. But it's, it's not built for gaming. You know, it's like, they're very, very flimsy. And also they wouldn't have like playable interiors where you can take the roof off and then, you know, move minis around inside or whatever. Um, so it's not ideal for gaming, but um, what, what I want to do is even just for myself is make some, uh, some models that are like the same thing, you know, kind of like made out of real wood and then have like really nice details and stuff. Um, but make them, uh, tough enough to gain with like um so I'm, i've been prototyping these this is my first little western building um and then this is like this is the same thickness as like a, a you know a, a, a foreground kit where it has you know playable interiors and then like but this is real wood you know basswood it's not mdf and then like having like laser cut um like wallpaper and like shingles and you know like the works and then you know strip wood and um uh like scribed basswood and like making real real wood kits that are heavily inspired by uh foreground <laughs> kits i mean and not not inspired like copyright infringement inspired, but you know, you know what I mean, right? Like, I really like their stuff. So I want to make something that's on par kind of with their stuff. That's um, also going to be super modular. So I want to make these so that um, like you can stack them on top of each other, like you can go um, vertical, you know, and then like have like roofs and decks and stuff that will that you can mix and match and like have like 
buildings that you can basically like pop together like Legos. So I've been working on some designs to um, to do uh, real wood um, kits that are for gamers, you know, like craftsman kits that uh, that are for for gaming. So I wanted to kind of gauge you guys' reaction. Um, like you can see on this one, this has this little cutout, and then it also has an insert on the bottom, so that these can be used to either stack on top of each other, um, and you can go vertical, or you could just, you know, plop them down next to each other and make a more spread out little thing. But I wanted to gauge you guys' interest because I wanted to see if you wanted one. <laughs> so, yeah, like, speaking of, like, Kickstarters, um, basically, I hate my laser. I hate the laser that I have. I want to get a better one. And I'm curious if you guys are interested in these enough to, um, like, help me fund a, a laser and then you get kits out of the deal. <laughs> so I think I'm going to keep uh, working on designs and then uh, possibly there could be, they could be for sale at some point in time. You know, the designs could be for sale. But anyways, um, yeah, let's... Uh, Let's do some uh, some prototyping, and it's a long video. So, you know, I know it's a long explanation, a long-winded intro, but uh, there's a lot of stuff that goes into uh, um, prototyping these kits. And I'm going to show you guys some of the software that I use. Um, I've been using um, Affinity, and um, it's like a very very much like a um, uh, an Illustrator kind of clone. And it does vector design. So when you're doing laser stuff, you need to do um, you need to do designs in vector because vector um, me measures angles and uh, like lines and stuff instead of pixels. You know um, because uh, with like vectors, um, it's something that you would use like in logo design or fonts and things like that where you can zoom in or zoom out as much as you want, and then it, it doesn't change the, um, the resolution, it just measures the angles of the actual uh, design file. So anyways, yeah, let's do some kit building. So uh, these are, uh, this is just a really rough prototype of like the, of one of these floors. Um, Kind of how I how I want these to be um, like immediately. I want these to be less than six inches, so that's one thing. <laughs> uh, make them a little bit shorter this way. I want them to kind of fit inside of a uh, six-inch footprint like this, and then. Uh, this is one of my foreground kits. Um, I'm actually going to start scanning in all of the rest of the foreground kits that I have um, that I haven't put together yet <laughs> um, because foreground is going out of business. So I'm super bummed about that. Uh, maybe I can like reverse engineer some stuff or sort of kind of copy their designs a little bit. Um, <clears throat> So I like where the windows are at, because basically I like these, um, and I want them to kind of look similar to these. Um, the doors are a little bit small, I think I'll make the doors bigger, probably the same size as these. So, there's a mini handy. Let's check things for scale. Pretty much everything I have is like 28 millimeter, 32 millimeter, so. Um, and then this is just chipboard. It's uh, super, super cheap. So it's easy to kind of prototype things with. Okay. 
My laser doesn't have to chunk through it as much as it would with MDF. And then also, I think I want to do some little window sills like these to kind of lock things in place. Uh, and maybe in some little windows, too. Alright, so there's a, a mock-up. Um, basically, so what I'm thinking is that I want to have floors like this. They can just stack on top of each other. Um, <clears throat> And then, um, you know, maybe even some like little awnings or something and like decks and just whatever, have it be like super modular. So I want to have a roof like this that can go on top. Um, but yeah, other than the, the doors need to be a little bit wider and then the um and put some little windowsill things in other than that maybe we'll a little bit different dimensions other than that looks pretty good so maybe a little bit taller doors too i think these are actually a little bit short because this is this is 32 mil and then um these are 28 mil so i might just make them a little bit taller all right, time to get back to the drawing board on the computer, make some changes. So this is the stuff that I have and like, don't look for this stuff. Um, I mean, so basically this is just a, uh, it's a bag of random pieces of, um, of basswood, um, but you're gonna get something different every time with this stuff. Uh, basically, they just bag up a bunch of random stuff. So, and I happen to sort of luck out and come up or find something that sort of looks like a clapboard. Um, this stuff you can buy basswood that is sort of milled to look like a clapboard. But it's super expensive, um, so I'm, I'm going to use this stuff kind of sparingly. But um, I also have like just regular ooh, thin strips of basswood too. Uh, this stuff. And then if I wanted to, I could cut, um, like I was thinking about doing the floors out of this stuff. And then just kind of uh, cutting that down to size so that it's like the right, so that I can just pop everything in and then kind of rearrange them a little bit or something with the laser. I also want to see how this stuff cuts in the laser because I've never put the super thin stuff through before. But wood actually cuts better in the laser than MDF or cardboard for some reason because it has that, those weird plastic binders in there. So, kind of an upgrade. Like here's a, um, this is a little model railroad um, building that I bought. I screwed up the roof. Um, I thought it was 40 or 90 degrees and it's not. Um, but you can see how they've got, you've got different materials like you've got, uh, these look like veneers, like, like very, very thin little bits of wood. And then it might be like walnut or something. And this is basswood, I'm pretty sure. But it's thin stuff. Um, 
but this is more more similar to the what what I want to make myself. Um, but this stuff is super fragile. It's not built for gaming. But it looks way better painted uh, and stained and stuff. So, all right, time to do some more design stuff. So I went ahead and did some revisions on this stuff. Uh, cut a little window sill or uh, you know, window frame, frame pieces. Um, and what I'm thinking is I'm gonna put a floor in, but I wanna kind of offset it a little bit so that uh, basically this stuff is going to be up just a tad so that uh, if I do like modular floors that it can slot in on the top and there's just going to be this little tiny lip kind of exposed down here, but I'm going to make that the floor. So it's actually going to be like this, but it's going to be offset on both sides. So I'm going to make, I'm going to cut the fascias out of this, but so this together though, that's pretty sturdy, like MDF plus basswood sandwich you know it's like two layers of mdf so, so that's that will definitely stand up to gameplay whereas this is just like begging to be smashed into uh pieces by being used so um yeah and then i went ahead and cut some kind of like i found some paper at a craft store that looks kind of like old timey um, uh, wallpaper. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on there. Oh, that doesn't look totally lined up. Well, it's not important. So, okay, and then I'm going to brace the sides too. I'm going to put these together. Uh, like I could just stick paper on here and then cut it, you know, or paint these. Um, but I just thought that would look cool. It's definitely starting to look more like a craftsman kit than a, just a plain MDF kit though. So, okay, I'm going to glue this stuff up and then I'm going to, uh, sandwich things together. So to glue the paper on, I'm going to be using uh, PVA glue and uh, that's actually going to create a much stronger bond than um, like super glue or something like that. So I'm just wetting my brush, just getting it a little bit wet and then I'm going to paint it on like really thin. And uh, so PVA glue actually does a better job when you're working with like paper. I mean like cardboard and stuff like that works really well too, MDF, but MDF works pretty good with super glue and um, PVA glue, wood glue, that's a type of PVA glue. So, I'm going to go on there. Put 
but it has that you know, little bit of work t working time to get everything lined up, right? And that's actually going to be a better glue for doing this part. I'm going to use my glue up tray to keep everything lined up. Mm -hmm. Should probably dry fit these first. I don't trust these corners like they aren't. I don't think that they are actually 90 degrees. They're just kind of meant to look like they are. I'm going to go ahead and brace my corners with some uh, strip wood too. And this is just balsa wood, so if there's a little tiny bit sticking up, I can just sand it off later. Oh, I should have stained that first. Oh well. This is a prototype. Okay, I went ahead and uh, cut some more stuff on the laser. Um, so... I think what I'm going to do to, actually that looks really true, um, what I, what I had originally thought was that with these, uh, side pieces, um, or these, these panels, is that that's going to be the thing that sort of locks this in place and keeps everything true. So I put, um, like, okay, so basically when you're gluing these up, you would glue up these first, right? And then put, put these in to kind of lock things in place, like where they're supposed to be. Like that. Like if I was going to write an instruction manual for these. And then these these get glued up like that and then there's this little lip part in the bottom where stuff will uh will pop in and then uh i'm going to use some strip wood on these sections here to kind of create some little uh i don't know what those cornices i guess i don't know what those are called um but i do like the um <laughs> I like the little like wainscoting, I think is what that is. Like little strip wood pieces on the sides. So, okay. Yeah, you can see my laser. <laughs> I have like a Chinese um, glow forge, basically like a knockoff um, bang good uh, Chinese um, laser. It's not quite as bad as like the eBay Chinese lasers, but it's kind of a piece of crap. <laughs> it has like hot and cold spots and uh, this stuff over on this side on every piece. This side is going to cut clean and then these things on this side 
the the laser loses power and then but okay so um so it looks like everything is gonna fit together pretty smoothly uh what i might do though going forward if i design more of these is put a little lip on this side where um so that this this piece comes down and then this pops in it has a little notch in where that goes in so all right i'm gonna start staining stuff because this is the really cool part is uh that this is you know real wood and i can just uh i can put a stain on it Okay, time to start trying out some stain options. Uh, what have I got? Okay, I've got these wood stain touch-up markers. Um, these are a good option, especially if you want to like draw in. Like, say that I wanted to make one of these floorboards a little bit darker than the others. You know, uh, kind of darken those up a little bit, but this is going to be, this is going to be like an oil based. So I'm going to hang off on using this. Uh, I want to try it. These are alcohol based and this is just rubbing alcohol and ink, but it's, it's going to stain better than, um, like watered down paint, you know? Um, it's going to penetrate a little bit better and it's not going to raise the wood grain and stuff and make things warp quite as much. So I have a couple of scrap pieces right here. And then I'm going to use a, a craft brush. Um, I just want to try these out because I haven't actually tried these on. This is basswood. Actually, both of these are basswood. All this stuff besides the MDF and then um, so that's kind of has a nice like warm wood look I can also go around on the the laser edges and then that's gonna um, get rid of a little bit of the burn marks not much um, so yeah that's an option it's not quite as dark as I would like that looks pretty good for like a fresh uh, fresh cut lumber I think I'm gonna go a little bit darker this is just black ink um, might even do a combination of the two that's pretty good And lastly, try this guy. That's like the perfect color. <laughs> That's actually perfect for like the floors. Um, I really like that. I'm gonna go ahead and just do the floor with this. Um, and then also this is the piece that I'm worried about warping the most. So you can see like the laser, I did an engraving for this part, like the floorboards, and then I did cut around it, but then it, it curved a little bit because there's these little tiny, teeny tiny cuts. So it kind of folded in this way a little bit. So this is gonna make it warp the least. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go in and do this. That is like the perfect color for the Floors, I think it looks like a like a hardwood. Um, what would that be? Uh, mahogany or like teak or something. But obviously, this is not going to work on this because it's not going to get into those little cracks. So I'm going to have to do something else for this. I think that I'm going to go with. Uh, 
um, this may be a combination of the black and the um, uh, sepia stain on here. Yeah, that's kind of, that's more like the color that I'm going for. I might even put more like black at the bottom to make it look a little more rotted and then do more like chipping paint on the bottom. Um, okay, I'm gonna finish this part. Okay, for these, um, because this is super thin, this stuff is only like maybe two millimeters, um, I'm gonna stain it on both sides to try and minimize the warping. I mean, it is gonna get glued up like immediately, so that's gonna keep it from warping too much, but, uh, so I'm just gonna, so if, it, because it's, the stain is soaking into both sides, um, it's gonna, it's not gonna pull in one direction and warp. It's gonna dry kind of evenly, more evenly. So that's not quite dark enough. I think I might go over that with the black. Yeah, that's looking really good. That's kind of perfect. Because I like how it's seeping in to the to the recesses, the black. And then I can go ahead and just glue that up right now. Uh, where's my PVA glue? This is just, um, it's Olin's tacky glue uh, in here. It's just that I buy big things of it and then I like little, like old shampoo bottles like this because it makes it easy to pour out. Um, so, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and Glue this side up. So it's that's pretty much like straight. Maybe watered down just a little bit. But this this is actually gonna make like a stronger bond than super glue. Because this is porous. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue this up immediately. Pop these guys in. Oh, I need to stain these too. Lock everything in place. Okay, so I made a boo boo. <laughs> um, I just glued things up wrong. Uh, so w one thing that I am seeing, right? is that putting the stain on first and then trying to uh, glue it up after. I think it might be smarter to glue up first and then put stain on because this stuff is really prone to warping. And it's like I have all these binder clips on and like I'm out of binder clips and it still just kind of wants to warp in some places <laughs> so 
I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry, uh, like I'm out of binder clips. And then I, when I put things together, this was supposed to be flipped the other way. So I need to recut this piece. <laughs> um, but you know, yeah, like this is why we prototype things. And then there's gonna be pieces of strip wood that are gonna go on these sides. So it will hide things, you know, if they warp like along here. But I think that the big success story is how well all this wood is taking stain. And then just the like the texture and like having like wallpaper and stuff. Um, it just looks really cool. So, okay. Back to the drawing board a little bit. Not much. All right, so this, <laughs> This textured, this scribed uh, basswood is just turning out to be way more problematic than I imagined because um, basically it just, it's, it wants to warp a lot. Um, like in my original design, what I was thinking, and like, this is weird. So these pieces are supposed to be exactly the same size, right? So this one looks good. I don't know if I screwed up with the laser somehow, but my idea, my original idea was to have a little bit of a lip poking out down here on the bottom, right? So this piece of basswood is about three millimeters thick. And then uh, what I wanted to do was have it to drop in, you know, at the top of another piece like this. And then something happened with this piece. Like, I don't know if it warped because it, it just warped a lot. And then it's like too long down here for this little lip to show. Um, so it's just problematic because that's gonna be like a structural element, right? Where if I have another whole floor like this and I wanna drop it in, this has to be sort of load bearing that little lip and then also this stuff is way harder to get a hold of like um, just having milled basswood so and then this you know I just I just engraved some basswood but it looks really good like that looks like a really good hardwood floor it looks really nice right so I'm thinking I might just um, do more uh, basswood stuff for the sides and then just do boards instead of trying to do this clapboard stuff and then that's another thing too is that with clapboard pieces like these would be individual boards so to get it to look really realistic you would have to go in and sort of like pick out uh, individual boards like that. So it might be a little bit more trouble than it's worth to do something like this. It just has that little bit of texture. But, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start painting this um, I mean, this is just a prototype piece, so I think I'm gonna, I, I'm, I probably will cut another piece like this eventually to do this side. Um, and then I took some strip wood and then put it around like that. But um, yeah, I'm gonna start painting. So, okay, here's my idea. Um, I actually need to restain this a little bit. It's not quite dark enough. So I'm just gonna come in with this uh, this black stain and put some more, uh, mostly around the bottom, like down here. And then that's another thing too, is that I think that if I were gonna write an instruction manual about how to put this together, I would tell people to 
put it together first and then stain because it's just so prone to warping. I love that it does actually take a stain, but still it's just kind of uh, problematic, a little bit. So yeah, first off I'm gonna just go around and kind of restain a little bit. Just I want this stuff a little bit darker. This isn't even stained like this, this strip wood. So I'm just gonna go in and kind of make things a little darker first. Okay, so I've got the uh, wood. Um, I'm just checking to see if it warped anymore. Uh, got the wood kind of stained like the color that I want it. Um, so the more I look at this, the more I think that I'm going to do different, different thing for the sides and then have like the roof kind of come down so that this would be sort of protected from rain a little bit and then have something different on the front and then have like an awning or something uh, like a different thing for the storefront. I know that there's some kind of purpose to clapboard being angled out. I think it, you know, it has to do with sort of sloughing off rain and snow. But, um, so, okay, so this is stained how I want it, right? So I'm going to go around and I'm going to use, uh, rubber cement. Um, so, okay, so what I'm doing is I'm going to take a sponge, right? This is just a piece of uh, packing foam insert. And uh, it's something to kind of dab this off on. It's just a little scrap piece of wood. Okay, so I'm going to go around, right? And I'm going to put some just on the top of this uh, kind of this is going to help get that chipped paint look. So I want to focus it more on the bottom. Right. And some of this is going to come more down to like how I uh, brush on the paint and the kind of paint that I'm using, but just proof of concept, right? So what that's going to do is it's going to kind of uh, help with that chip paint look. Okay, so now what I can do is, um, let's see, I want these to have like different colors uh i think i'm gonna do the panel the the walls this kind of this uh green and i'm using craft paint because i want it to have lousy coverage um so okay so i come in right and on the top i want to have better coverage but uh i want the um basically I want I want these like raised parts to have the more chip paint on them than on the bottom or sorry the I want the raised parts to have more chip paint in them than the stuff that's in like the little grooves so and like I could take a small brush um and kind of go into the grooves too in spots where I want it. Or another way to do, there's lots of ways to do chip paint. Like, okay, I've got a, a stipple brush here, the, um, or like a stencil brush, and then I can just take some off and then kind of go around like that. But the thing is, is that that gets the raised parts better uh, than the, the stuff that's in the grooves and I actually want I want it to be reversed from that 
So I could, you know, I could like step it on like that and then come in and do the little recesses. Um, but that's kind of tedious. Um, so I'm hoping that this, uh, the rubber cement is gonna kind of, uh, I want it to just chip off. I want to take it off with like after I've painted it. Yeah, painted it. Then I want to just kind of rub it off the surface. That's looking cool though. I like it. I like it a lot actually. Okay, so for for this part though, doing these like windowsill things and then the trim, I think it's easier to just kind of come in and kind of paint it like unevenly. Like that. Like that looks a little bit more convincing. Um, For like a chipped whitewash kind of paint. And I was planning on doing more strip wood kind of around the sides, but um, I, I'm kind of planning on going back to the drawing board with this stuff, so I just want to see how it looks painted. Um, just kind of experimenting with some things. But this um, this is sort of peeling off the uh, the rubber cement. If I just kind of rub on it. And it does come off or you know if I if I wanted to again since it's real wood I could just take like a nail file kind of go around and take some off where I don't want it so yeah I like it Really cool. That might be the easiest way to do this. Okay, so after I went around and kind of like chipped some of the paint off in some spots. It's just like a nail file. Um, now I'm kind of going back in and like restaining a little bit. And uh, I really like the look, especially like this, um, this uh, chipped whitewash stuff. I like the high contrast. It's a dark, uh, you know, rotten wood, and then the whitewash. Looks good with the green too, but... And I'm even, the warping is even growing on me. It, like, it gives it a little bit of character. <laughs> but I am kind of trying to focus some of that, the, like, rotten wood, dark uh, stuff down at the bottom. Or maybe like around uh, like windows and things where some of that water would collect and kind of rot things out.
definitely has a cool look to it, though. I like it a lot. Okay, so I uh, did a fair amount of like kind of prototyping stuff, uh, cut some more stuff on the laser, um, got like a roof design, so I didn't need to mess with it. This makes me crazy, I swear, like, so, you know, if you can't tell with my laser, of course, this side I'll cut clean, this is cardboard. And then this is not cut all the way. Like, that's how bad the hot and cold spots are on my laser. I swear, like, I'm never buying another Chinese laser ever again. Um, but uh, I need to... <laughs> so I did, I did some little prototype pieces out of uh, chipboard. Um, like, uh, I've got a little insert thing to go like this is going to be this fits into here and then this what i'm thinking is that this is how these things are modularly going to fit together is that uh this part is going to go on the bottom on here and then this part is going to be in this top rim thing um but that kind of threw off my other design stuff so i'm just going to kind of play around with this and see see how things look um, like it's gonna complicate the roof design these rafter things if I if I end up doing that so so this is how I picture this working this is gonna pop in to here uh, and then that's just going to be that top floor, or the, the insert, right? But to line this up on the bottom, I'm just going to put this on the bottom, because uh, this, is the same, this is the same size as this. So I'm just going to line it up like so. I'll just mark that with a pencil, that's where that belongs. Go ahead and glue this down. Well, <laughs> so, all right, here's how the, uh, here's how the roof is supposed to work. Um, so on the front side, What I think I want to do is have a, um, like a, a sign part that goes on the front. So this is, let's see, it's like eight millimeters across here. I think this is, so, uh, yeah, and then I could just build something out of like strip wood to put on the front, like so. Uh, in fact, I'm kind of talking myself into doing that. And then these, uh, this would pop into the bottom. But I'm thinking that to make these 
roof pieces, I might do some kind of element that has like a top and a bottom uh, rafter thing. So, yeah, I think I, I think I like that. And I can just glue that on there. And then I did a, um, where's that? <laughs> I tried to, this would be made out of um, like basswood, but then I, I prototyped it out of um, cardboard. This is just chipboard. So it cut too, too far with the laser. Um, just trying to engrave it. So, but then that would go on here like that. because one side, one side would have like a sign and then the other side would have a, um, just a little roof insert thing, like little cut pieces like this. Uh, and then that would kind of sit in, but then the roof pieces, where's my roof pieces? That's not it. Uh, the roof pieces would, oh, these are too short. All right, I need to go back to the drawing board with that, but these would stretch out over everything. So like the sides and then they would be flush with, I guess this much. So I need to do some more measurements. <laughs> Um, but the basic design is going to be the same. Like again, this is chipboard. Um, but these cutouts are... That's where I screwed up. Okay, I took a measurement off that and it needs to be on the outer, outer, outer edge. Um, these, um, these, are, these will eventually be like MDF you know, or basswood, one of the two. They're gonna be like three millimeters thick, um, like this stuff. So, but this is why I do the, the measurement, or I try things first out of like chipboard, because like, I think this is, this piece, this is like maybe 75 cents of chipboard, <laughs> so. I do want to check my check my angles though. It's cardboard, you know. Why can't a laser just evenly cut cardboard? Okay, so. These will pop in like so. And then these go on top like so. <laughs> oh wait, did I measure that right? No, I didn't. Because basically I want this to go in a little bit like that. I want it to sit in just a tiny bit and then have a, a piece of basswood that can go to cover this up on top right there. Whew, okay, back to the drawing board. <laughs> Angle does not look good, actually. It's like the right, um, the right size, but then if these are, if this is MDF though, this this part is going to be thicker, so it's going to be more like that. 
and then this is going to get covered up with shingles anyways so but you know there's really no reason why this shouldn't be chipboard so i might just do i just do chipboard and i might do like some rafters across these just kind of pop in drop in on those All right, I'm gonna go ahead and glue this part up though. This part I'm happy with. I like that. Sort of. Because this is supposed to be two millimeters. Or I might do, I mean, this is just the prototype, but still, it's like the, the, I want to have these be modular so that they can have other sections sit on top. And also this, this stuff, it kind of, I feel like it looks like corduroy. It really doesn't read as, um, uh, what's it called? Um, clapboard. So I actually went to I went to oh, a like model railroad supply place kind of close to me down in Wheat Ridge, um, and then like this stuff this here's here's like legit the model railroad clapboard. So you get two two strips like this for like six dollars. I think that even if you go on their website, if you go on Northeastern Scale Lumber's website, that this the it's the same as like retail with this place, so that's good. Um, <laughs> but uh, but I think that if I'm gonna spend them, if I'm gonna do it, I might as well just make, I might as well just use this stuff. Cause this actually reads like real clapboard. But that does look like the right scale. So, and then this is a uh, uh, board and batten or bead and batten, whichever it is. So that would go like this. I have to use that for a different project. Okay, all right, back to the drawing board. Okay, another change of plans. Um, <laughs> I'm sick of being on the computer. So I'm going to do some strip wood building. I have these little coffee stir stick things. Uh, and then these are like the perfect size to just make a roof out of. So yeah, I'm sick of being on the computer. Kind of sticks out like the perfect amount. I, I mostly just want this part to be straight. Should be staining these. Before I glue them, but since this is super glue, it's not gonna it's not gonna like change the um like if I if I was using PVA glue, the stain could like melt the PVA glue. Um stain them after I'm done. Where do I need to be? I need to put the rest of the rafters in there. I'm 
decided to go ahead and make a like a sign, a front sign. It's, uh, out of scratch too, because it's a little bit more fun than doing stuff on the computer. <laughs> I am gonna design something with the laser, just not right now. So I'm just cutting down some uh, some pieces of this coffee stir stick stuff to make scale lumber. But I think I'm gonna have these be like long and short, like not have really big boards. So chop some of these down, the excess parts to the front sign. This part in the back is not going to be visible, so I'll just use these are the pieces that are cut down to size for that. So part of the reason for the black super glue too is because um, super glue will protect the wood from getting stained. So if I um, if I if I use the black stuff, it just looks like some pitch or tar or something. And because um, like super glue when it dries, sometimes it can haze and it can turn like sort of white like almost like ice it'll look like snow or ice or something so I don't want that <laughs> so if there is anything showing I want it to be black I need to put the rest of these rafters in here at some point too I actually really like how this this wood is like all bent out of shape. It has some character to it. Okay, so this is just the little scratch belt roof thing, and then it's stained. I actually really like how this looks. Um, <laughs> I, I I like this. I think that's cool. That's kind of a cool design. I'm um, having the notches in here. Um, this is supposed to go together with one of these, you know. Um, so I'm going to come back to this, but I, <laughs> scratch building is fun. So I really like this and I don't want to cover up. I like in reality a roof like this would leak like a sieve. Um, so I'm going to have to do something to uh, but I actually, I like how it's like missing this one spot on this side. You can kind of see the, the little interior, like the, the wood showing on this side on the top. Um, so I think what I want to do is I'm just going to put shingles over this. Um, <clears throat> and then have them be kind of like broken in spots. Because I want to show some of this cool roof. Uh, all right, so I have some laser cut like model railroad shingles that I'm going to use and then I'm going to design my own at some point too because there's a, a certain design that I want to do. Uh, there's the interior. This stuff is slightly glossy, like that's totally dry and it's slightly glossy, which is a little bit of a bummer, but 
you know, I can paint, I can paint over that, so. It's not supposed to be visible anyways, but. Um, okay, so I'm gonna grab my shingles. Okay, <laughs> so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna do like tar paper, and then this is um, the really, really cheap uh, one ply, like squeeze it, you know, use it on your butt and it gives you splinters. Um, got this during COVID because you know, they're out of everything else, um, but I'm determined to use it for something now that I can get quilted two ply again. Um, probably gonna make sculpt mold out of it at some point. But okay, so I'm gonna cut this down uh, into strips. Um, okay, it just doesn't want to cut. But I want these to be like roughly, um, like one inch wide and then about two inches long. So scale wise, they would be like five feet by uh, 10 feet. So I can just put these down um, and then tear the edges. So this is a Mod Podge um, mat and then black paint. Um, so I'm gonna put this down on top here. It feels like a shame to cover up all this cool wood stuff. Put that down on top and then kind of paint over it. I could just leave this as a tar paper roof. It's sort of showing through. That's showing through a little bit. And put another part on top. And this is like period accurate, like tar paper is. Tar paper roof is period accurate. Or like 1800s. So before I if I decide to put on any shingles, I'm going to, I'm going to do this first. All right. So this is the, these are the shingles that I have. Um, I think I'm just going to leave it a tar paper roof. But these are uh, HO scale, like the lion's share of um, model railroad stuff is going to be HO scale, the vast majority. Um, but I think that they those look those look good as far as scale goes. Um, so. Yeah, I think that's going to be it. Um, I'll post some better pictures kind of like the, the interior and exterior and uh, some close-ups so you can see what things look like. But uh, but yeah, I mean, um, definitely like the first step into a good modular system and I love a good modular system. So yeah, alright, thanks for watching guys, and I will see you in the next one.